AZ500 simulation questions. Domain one, manage identity and access. And this is uh, part four on this uh, series of, uh, of videos about simulation questions for the AZ500. This is actually the last section on the manage and identity uh, access domain. So this section is uh, a little bit longer than the uh, previous three sections because this one covers uh, about 17 questions uh, rather than, than 10 uh, as we have been covering the previous video. So if, the, if this is the first time that, that you uh, watch the, this series of videos, there are obviously three more uh with questions um about this uh, about this uh this topic this domain so i would encourage that you um go and watch those if you are thinking about uh either taking this certification exam or if you're just here because you want to learn about microsoft azure security and um, as always when you get to uh this video on youtube i would appreciate if you uh click on like if you like the video obviously uh so that would encourage me uh you know encourage me to produce or to keep on producing this kind of stuff thank you question 32 you have an azure active directory uh azure ad tenant named mutex and all azure ad users are assigned a premium P1 license. You need to enable a password reset uh, for all managers of the company. Which three actions should you perform? Choose the appropriate actions from the left and then place them in the correct order on the right. So the correct order is that well first, you need to create a, a group that contains all the managers, name uh, Nutix managers. Uh, then on the password reset properties page, under the option for self-service password reset, uh, enable, you choose selected uh, to choose that group. And, and then you add the group that you just created. So here is the, the page for the uh, password reset properties. Um, so once you go to the uh, Azure portal, uh, on the home uh, screen, you can click on users. And uh, on this page, you can see basically here where you are. Uh, you are on the default directory, right? On the Azure directory, um, Azure Active Directory rather. And then here just, you know, once you go to the users blade, you click on properties, and then here is where you can click the self-service password reset. Um, by default, none is, is, is enabled, basically mean that nobody can reset their own password. Um, and um, on the, in this case, you're gonna choose the, the selected link over here, and then this would allow you to select the group that, that we just created. Uh, if you want to enable all the users in the company uh, to enable the self-service password reset, then you choose all. Um, now, if you are only on the cloud, if you don't have any on-premises Active Directory, that's, that's the only thing that it takes. If you are on a hybrid environment and you use AD Connect to um, uh, synchronize all your user accounts to the cloud, then this is needed, but there is a little bit more uh, that also it's required to do this. And, and there has been uh, one or two questions in which we have already covered that, 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 that scenario. Question 33. You configure an access review called password management uh, as shown in the uh, screenshot below. It must ensure that users can review their own access. Access reviews must be completed on a monthly basis. You want to enable Azure to make recommendations on whether users should continue to have access 
or be denied access if they do not complete an access review within the defined uh, time period. What configuration uh, should you uh, change based on the uh, uh, screenshot below? And, and you know, these are the different choices, right? Uh, password management, this is an access review per, uh, password management use. Uh, there is a start date, there is a frequency, which is monthly. Uh, and the end date here, it's uh, end by, and then the, this is the end date. Uh, the scope, it's everyone. And the role the, that you want to review is the uh, password administrator. The reviewers is member self, which basically means that members will be able to review themselves to see if they are still need access to that. Uh, upon completion settings, um, auto apply results to response is disabled. And on the if reviewers don't respond, is set to remove access. So based on the instructions over here and based on this, then you're gonna choose the correct answer. The correct answer here is B, if reviewers don't respond. The option, if reviewers don't respond, uh, sets what action will happen if an access review is not completed within the configured period. You can select uh, not to take action and to maintain access, uh, to remove access, to approve access, or receive recommendation from Asher on whether or not to maintain or deny access. This setting will enable Asher to make recommendations on whether users should continue to have access or be denied access if they do not complete an access review within the defined period. Question 34. As an Azure architect, you are required to block access from iOS devices to an application that has some specific functionalities uh, intended only for Windows users. What should you use to achieve this requirement? The correct answer here is uh, C, Azure Conditional Access Policy. Uh, you would use an Azure Conditional Access Policy, as shown in, in the figure, uh, with Conditional Access Policy that you can choose uh, multiple apps for which you can enable multi-factor authentication. So in this case, when you create, so basically you, you if you go to home uh, on your uh, uh, default directory, you click on security and then you click on conditional access. And uh, on the conditional access, you click on policies and then new, uh, a, a, new, a new policy, right? Uh, the type of condition that we're going to create over here is a, a device platform. Uh, and the device platform refers to the OS in, of, the, of the mobile device. In this case, we're talking about iOS devices. Now, the conditions is uh, one is selected. And again, so if we look at conditions, device platform one selected, uh, and here it's what you would configure. So apply to uh, the uh, policy of, uh, platforms, and this is the platform that, that, so we are only going to apply that uh, to uh, people that use um, iOS devices. Question 35, you are configuring the authentication and signing method that will be used for Metroil's hybrid identity. The security department has mandated that the on-premises Active Directory must be used to validate access for users that sign into the existing line of business application and cloud apps. In order to meet these requirements, you have decided to deploy pass-through authentication. What is the least privileged role that is required to set up pass-through authentication? The current answer is B, Global Administrator. The Azure AD Global Administrator credentials provide configuration access to all administrative features within an Azure AD. This credential is required 
for the configuration of the pass-through authentication within Azure AD Connect. Question 36. You are developing an automated tool that will use several APIs within the Dream Suite's Azure AD tenant. The security team has mandated that API access uh, to Azure resources must be managed using the most restricted permission possible. You do not want to, uh, or you don't want the automated tool to sign in as a normal user identity and would like to use certificate-based authentication. Which commandlet should you use, uh, or should you run rather, in order to create an identity that can use certificate-based authentication? The current answer is uh, B, new-azad service principle. The new-azad service principle command led will create a new service principle within Azure AD. Service principles are used when applications should not sign in as a fully privileged user and instead leverage restricted permissions as scoped only to a specific set of Azure resources. This option will allow the creation of an identity that can use certificate-based authentication. Question 37. Your users have been assigned uh, to different groups and have permissions granted by role-based access control uh, using the uh, Azure Active Directory built-in roles. Which pane in the Azure portal can be used to verify the Azure roles to which the user has been added? The current rates B, select the user in Azure Active Directory and then choose Assign Roles. So basically, um, you know, if you, you know, if you go to the user, you look at the user that you are, um, that you want to see, and then you click on Assigned Roles. And then here would appear the name of the user, and this would be the roles to which that user has been um, uh, has been assigned. Question 38. You are configuring the application uh, administrator role within Azure AD Privilege Identity Management. Uh, the security department has provided the requirement that users uh, with this assignment must authenticate through MFA and provide an approved change control number an administrator should be notified upon activation and only the, uh, be allowed to leverage the elevated rights for eight hours. What configuration should you uh, change based on the screenshot? All right, so uh, here are the different choices. The activation maximum duration hours, it's, it's eight hours, that's here. Uh, on activation, require MFA, so that's that set over here. And, and then the, the choices that you can choose over here are required justification on activation, require ticket information on activation, and require approval uh, to activate. So based on this, what answer should you choose here? The correct answer here is B, require ticket information on activation. The required ticket information on activation setting ensures the user must enter a business justification, specifically ticket information. When they go through the activation process, uh, when they go through the activation process, right? Uh, the setting will ensure that uh, the user must provide a, an approved change control number before the role is activated. Question 39. The owner of 
an application wants to see a report regarding appropriate access to the application and um, by a specific groups. When she tries to open access review in the external identities blade, she gets an error. You investigate and find that a prerequisite is not being met. Which of the following prerequisites must be met to allow the user to open the access review? The correct answer here is C. A user does not have an Azure AD Premium P2 license. Uh, the user must have an Azure AD Premium P2 license. Uh, otherwise, when opening access review in the external identities blade, it will show the message that uh, this type of license is a prerequisite. The owner of an application is considered a sponsor and can review a guest's membership in a group. Question 40. You are configuring a conditional access policy for the Dream uh, Suite uh, Corporation as shown below. You need to make sure that the policy only allows devices that are marked as compliant uh, and in tune to access uh, the, that or the already included cloud-based uh, CRM app from uh, trusted locations within the network. Uh, what condition uh, should be uh, changed in order to meet uh, the requirements? So here is the, uh, the name of the application. Uh, we have one application included, conditions are zero. These are the different conditions, right? Um, so based on this, we need to choose uh, which of this has to be changed. The correct answer here is C, device state. The device state condition allows you to block or manage devices such as, uh, uh, such as ones that are not hybrid AD joined or marked as compliant by Intune. Uh, this condition will ensure that only devices that are marked as compliant in Intune can access the cloud-based CRM app. Question of 41. You are an administrator for Metroil and need to transfer an existing Azure subscription to an account that is located in the Nutix Azure AD tenant. What type of permission is required for the account to accept the transfer and set up payment? The correct answer here is B the billing administrator. The billing administrator permission provides the ability to accept the transfer of billing ownership to an account in another Azure AD tenant. This role allows you to set up billing information for a subscription that is transferred from another uh, Azure AD tenant. Question of 42. You need to choose an authentication method for the cloud uh, using the Azure AD hybrid identity solution. The solution should enable Azure AD to handle uh, the sign-ins in the cloud and allow user-level Azure AD security policies. It does not need to support sign-ins using smart cards or certificates, but must support disaster recovery. Which of the following method should you propose? The correct answer here is A, pass-through authentication plus seamless SSO with password hash synchronization. You should choose the pass-through authentication plus seamless single sign-on or SSO with password hash synchronization. This method uses Azure AD to handle user sign-ins and verify passwords. It provides user-level policies such as account or password expiry. 
and this solution has signing requirements that support user level uh, Azure AD uh, security policy and it supports disaster recovery as well. Question 43. You are currently part of the Azure infrastructure management team at Newtix Corporation. Uh, in a few weeks, you will be promoted to user access administrator for the new text tenant. You will need to be uh, proficient at granting and managing access to users and resources. You will also need to troubleshoot RBAC related issues uh, for the tenant. Match the RBAC related issues on the left with their causes or fixes on the right. So here are the issues authorization fail error when creating resources, role assignments, etc. So you're going to match this with uh, the cost of fixes on the right. So uh, the current answer is a follow. So if you get an error that says link subscription was not found error, in that case, you need to create a support ticket with Microsoft. Uh, if you get the cannot assign roles, you need to log in using the user access administrator role. Basically means that you, you're signing in with a role that cannot do that. Uh, if you get the security principle flag with the identity no longer exist error, it means that you need to, uh, the role uh, assignment is not removed from that user. Uh, the uh, authorization fail error when creating a resource means insufficient role privilege at the parent scope and the role assignments for a subscription are broken after migrating to the subscription to another tenant basically meaning that when you migrate from one tenant to another uh, those role assignments are not kept and then you need to reassign those roles. Again, so here it's uh, more scenarios about those uh, errors over there. Question 44. Developers in your company have created an application registration process that will access all the resources. They are not sure which authentication method is recommended uh, to prove the application's identity when requesting a token. Which of the following should you suggest? The correct answer here is C, certificate. You should choose a certificate. The two types of authentication available for service principles are certificate-based authentication and password-based authentication, which is uh, an application secret. A certificate is recommended by Microsoft as a more secure authentication method uh, than secrets. Passwords can be easily stored in plain text on the desktop or in the application. Question 45. You are working in enterprise uh, in the enterprise security team and you are advised that there are too many administrators. Uh, the following shows an overview of your Azure Active Directory. So, um, you will like to assign a security group to the roles in order to conveniently manage the roles. You receive an error when you try to perform this action. How do you resolve this problem? And these are the choices. The correct answer is A, upgrade to Azure AD Premium P2. You should upgrade Azure AD Premium P2. If the customer has an Azure AD Premium license, the admin can assign a security group to a role, and the members of that group will inherit the app role. This is a conveniently way to manage roles because the group owner does not need to be uh, an AD admin. Question 46. You have been tasked with activating privilege identity management 
within your organization. Currently, uh, there are 50 administrators within the New Tex Corporation. Uh, there will be 18 administrators uh, managed through privileged identity management who will require the approval of role activation. Three different reviewers will approve activations and the two managers of users who have administrative access will complete a monthly review. Based on this, how many different uh, Azure AD Premium P2 licenses should you have allocated uh, for this project? The correct answer here is A, 23. Uh, 23 uh, Azure AD Premium P2 licenses are required for this project. Uh, this includes the 18 administrators who will hold administrative access through uh, Privilege Identity Management, or PIM, uh, the three approvers and the two reviewers uh, will also require the Azure AD Premium P2 licenses. Question 47, and this is the last question on uh, domain one, the um, managed identity and access uh, domain. The New Tips Corporation has offices in New York, Los Angeles, London, and Venice. The IP range for each location is shown below. And here is the uh, IP range. Okay. Um, you create several conditional access policies for the sales team uh, to make sure that they can access the cloud-based uh, CRM system. The conditional access policies and relevant users and groups are listed below. So these are the users. Here are the, the, the groups that they belong to. And then here are the conditional access policy. So the uh, conditions of the pilot New York uh, include the sales, it ex excludes marketing, and the location is New York, and the permission is grant access. So uh, uh, a, a clue over here is to look at the permission. Um, so you want to make sure that, so grant access, um, obviously any permission that is a block access, basically that's what it means. So. We got three types of permission, grant access, block access, require MFA, right? Uh, depending on the, um, on, the, um, on the condition. And then here are the, uh, the different choices that you need to choose. The correct answer here, it's B. Uh, John can access the cloud-based CRM system from New York. Uh, because the conditional access policy, uh, CA policy New York, is granting access to the cloud-based CRM system by enforcing uh, rules uh, for anyone that is a member of the group sales and is located in the network uh, configure as New York. John will be able to access the cloud-based CRM system uh, from New York. All right, so we have come to the conclusion of the domain one, manage identity and access of the AZ500 certification exam. The domain one of this exam, it's worth from 30 to 35% of the questions. In the next video, we will start with our first set of questions for domain two, which is implement platform protection, uh, which is worth from uh, 15 to uh, 20%. Uh,